they will wave the white flag on Rusty Wallace, point five, three, three miles away from win number two in 1997. And heavy traffic right in front of these cars. I don't know if it's going to play in anybody's hand. Gordon takes a look again. Rusty comes down, slams the door. Gordon on him. Here comes Jeff Gordon to take the lead. Gordon takes the lead. Rusty slips. Jeff Gordon will win at Bristol, Tennessee. Ray Everham is ecstatic. How can that possibly happen out there? I don't know. I'm going to have to watch it. I just, I have no idea. You know, it was pretty tight down there. I mean, that's what Bristol's all about. You get down to the closing lap at Bristol, and, and it's any man for himself. I've seen it done many times. Got second. That's about it. I long for short track racing. It can be a nightmare. Stand on the gate and swap some paint. I have a passion for short track racing. It's short, it's tight, and it's action packed. It can be friend or foe. This is what it's all about. This is fun. For some, it is fun. For others who get short-circuited, it's frustrating. Everything happens fast. At the beginning, there are the near misses, the close call, then finally, contact and the crunch. Eventually, the patience wears thin. And when that happens, you guessed it, the spin. Survivors must dodge the proverbial bullet. In this case, a punted peer named Presley. Others aren't so lucky. They zig when they should have zagged. In other words, when the day is done, they end up crashed, crunched, or even worse, victims of others' frustrations. If you think the high banks of Bristol are bad, you haven't seen me until you've watched 500 laps here at Martinville. Today, the shortest track in NASCAR racing welcomes the largest field in its 50-year history. Today, 42 cars separated by half a second. Race on half a mile for half a day. Sounds like an event that should be sponsored by a headache powder. Oh, I guess they thought of that already. Here's a little bit of a clue. Keep your hammers handy. You may have to chisel your way through some mean mileage here today at Martinsville. There is no argument. To win at Martinsville, you must have great brakes and a few good brakes. The track is short. The speeds are fast. It's a drag race down the straightaways and a nose-diving dash into the turns. The racing surface changes from pavement to concrete. But it's not just the track. It's the traffic. It's not a lead foot that wins at Martinsville. It's the old soft shoe. Today, it's a field of 42 cars, and everyone's screaming for the same spot and a better result. Last fall, the Kellogg's crew repaired the clutch assembly, earning an amazing second-place finish and sending Terry Labonte to the title. Martinsville often translates to trouble for most, but today it will mean triumph for one driver that gets a lucky break. Well, it was cold and windy on Friday here at Martinsville, and qualifying had more twists and turns than a Perry Mason mystery. But when it was over and done with, the usual suspects for the poll, well, they'd been found guilty of taking too much time on their qualifying lap, and they were sentenced to pitting on the backstretch today. That's the story for Dale Jarrett. He starts 23rd, but he's got lots of, well, let's say cellmates back there. Earnhardt, Irvin, Marlin, and Martin all pitting on the backstretch. The last guy to win from the backstretch was Daryl Waltrip in 1988. You know, we might need Perry Mason by the end of this day, because one of those guys hopes to steal a win. We are nearly a quarter of the way through the 1997 NASCAR Winston Cup season, and already it's been a year that Joe Nemechek out of Lakeland, Florida, would like to soon forget. But things turning around for the young driver this weekend. Joe starting on the outside of the front row here at the Martinsville Speedway. And Joe, how big of a boost is this for you and your team? Oh, uh, this is a big boost, you know, for the whole Bell South Mobility team. Uh, we've had a tough year so far, uh, both personally and, and with the team. Uh, uh, we know we we should have done better than we've done. Uh, you know we've wrecked a lot of race cars and stuff, but uh, things are looking good. You know this is a big shot in the arm for the whole team, and uh, I'm looking forward to running all day here at Martinsville. Joe Nemechek starting second on Friday. He was on the pole for almost all of the qualifying round. That is until late when Kenny Wallace snatched the pole away by 51 thousandths of a second. Kenny, you've been saying that you're convinced to yourself that you can drive in Winston Cup. Now it's time to convince the fans how you're going to handle this race today, man. Man, I'm just going to run up all front, run up front all day long. Uh, our team feels like we can win. Uh, it's a long race. It's 500 laps here. We just got to take care of the brakes and, uh, and be around at the end. It's business as usual. You know, we just start this race and go racing.
Kenny Wallace is the 11th different pole winner in the last 12 races here at Martinsville. He hoped to back up his first career Winston Cup pole with his first career win. Now the chief operating officer for Central Carolina Grocers, the Grand Marshal, John W. Moore. Gentlemen, start your engines. With those four words, 42 cars fire to life. It's the largest field in the history of this 50-year-old facility. The pride and joy of the Clay Earls family. ESPN, the world leader in motorsports coverage, welcomes you live to Martinsville Speedway in Virginia. And today's eighth race of the 1997 NASCAR Winston Cup season, the goodies heading powder 500. Going into this event, Dale Jarrett has a 90-point lead in the standings over Terry Labonte. Jeff Gordon's win boosted him to third last week. The real battle, however, is back there. Six through ten as only 42 markers separate those five drivers. More than 80,000 race fans have gathered here on this beautiful Sunday afternoon to watch 500 laps of competition around this half-mile facility. Hi everyone, I'm Bob Jenkins. Great to be back as we end up the first half of the 1997 short track season here today. Now, when you think of short tracks, you normally think of Rusty Wallace. And certainly in the long term, he is the king of the short tracks. However, look at the results from 1995 to current. In the last 18 races, Jeff Gordon is the driver who leads in every category except one. Rusty still leads and the laps led with over 2,000. We've been talking about how you've got to save the brakes today, but Benny, is it going to be that easy? No, because human nature is going to take over. You know, you're driving down the expressway at 55 miles per hour. That's the speed limit. But cars are you're just keeping up with traffic, and pretty soon you look down and realize you're running 65 miles per hour. You just kind of following the traffic. That's the same thing that happens here. You're following someone, you try to follow them. If they start driving away, you start driving just a little bit harder. If someone is pressing you from behind, you start driving just a little bit harder. When you do that, you use too many brakes and you use the car up. And boy, that's so easy to do here at Martinsville. Benny, let's take that highway ride just a little bit further. I know that everyone out there has been in the mountains. Go down the mountain, you hit those brakes four or five times, then the pedal begins to go away. Well, can you imagine? Here today, they're going to hit that pedal 1,000 times, twice each lap, and they're going to hit it harder than you're going to hit it on the highway, too, because they're going down the straightaways 135, 140 miles an hour. they got to slow her down to 60 or 65 getting into those turns, so if you don't believe that'll use up some brakes, and many of them will, we'll be talking about it all day. Ford leads the Manufacturers Championship as we head into today's race with 54 points, and there are 20 Fords in today's lineup. Chevrolet is next with 47 points, and 14 Chevys are in the grid. Eight Pontiacs. Pontiac has 32 points in the Manufacturers Championship. Ford has by far led the most laps this year, thanks mostly to Dale Jarrett and Rusty Wallace. Chevy has led 608 laps, and Pontiac has led 17. Let's take a look at the starting lineup. In his 97th career start, Kenny Wallace wins his first pole position. His career best finish was here in 94, a fourth. Joe Nemechek ties his career best start outside row one. Jeff Gordon has seven poles and four wins here. Either Jeff Bodine does, Jeff Gordon, the winner of last race here. Ricky Rudd, best start of 1997, starts fifth, and alongside will be Hud Strickland. Starting seventh, Terry Labonte in his 550th NASCAR Winston Cup start, and Bobby Hamilton, who won the pole and finished third here last fall. Bill Elliott in his 30th Martinsville race starts ninth, and Kyle Petty is in his 34th Martinsville race starting 10th. In the 11th position, Jimmy Spencer was his best finish of 97 last week at Bristol. Ted Musgrave, second in the 1995 Goodies Petty Powder 500. Starting 13th, Robert Presley, and 14th, Fourth in points, Bobby Labonte. And starting 15th, the driver who's won his race four times in a row, Rusty Wallace. On the outside, Mike Skinner. DW starts in 17th spot. On the outside will be Ward Burton. And then Ward's older, younger brother, Jeff, will start in the 10th row alongside Lake Speed. Back in the 10th row, 11th row is Morgan Shepard on the inside. Johnny Benson 
on the outside. Dale Jarrett, the points leader, starts back in 23rd alongside Derek Cope. Dale Earnhardt, seven-time champion in row 13 alongside Ken Schrader. And in the 14th row on the inside, John Andretti and Steve Grissom. And in row 15, we find Jeremy Mayfield in the car number 37. And Ernie Irvin finished second here last year from the back stretch, so you can do it in the Texaco Ford. Dick Trickle on the inside of row number 16, along with Rick Mast, who's ailing today. We'll talk more about that later on. Chad Little with a good run last year starts inside 17th row, along with Michael Waltrip driving the local Wood Brothers Ford. And in Row number 18, it's Ricky Craven, his first race since his injury at Texas, and Mike Wallace. And in the 19th row will be Brett Bodine and Sterling Marlin, the last two drivers to earn positions in qualifying. And in row number 20, Mark Martin with a rare provisional start, and Robbie Gordon, one of the rookie drivers. And in row 21 will be Dave Marcus and Bobby Hillen. And those drivers who fail to qualify include Gary Bradbury, Lance Hooper in substitution for Greg Sachs, Billy Standridge, Randy McDonald, and David Green. Those five drivers went home. Here's Mark Martin's onboard camera. He starts there at the back of the field. There we see Michael Walter, Zitko Carr, Rusty Wallace's Miller Light Automobile, Ted Musgrave, the Prime Star Family Channel, and we see Jeff Bonine and also our pole sitter, Kenny Wallace. And we're about ready to go racing. Coming down for the start, green flag is out. has ever led here at Martinsville and the first lap he has led in 1997 and the cars get bunched up over on the back stretches and Mike Skinner has a problem. Yes he does and they really did get bunched up. Brett Bodine and Sterling Marlin got together. Skinner's car just barely moving. Don't know what the problem might be but something has gone awry with his Chevrolet. And unfortunately there's a lot of grills that's been banged up on that back stretch. That jumble up there and a spin down in the corner. Looks like Steve Grissom is going around. Steve Grissom driving with a broken foot suffered last week at uh, Bristol. That nope. car is in the middle of the racetrack. No caution yet. The car is still right in the middle of the racetrack. Now we have a caution. But it's a little bit too late for Steve Grissom. He went a lap down. He's going to try to race back around hard to get back to the start finish line, but he's not going to make it. And we understand it was a carburetor problem on Mike Skinner's number 31 Lowe's machine. First caution on lap five. Here's Bill Weber. Uh, Skinner's creep to his pits. All these guys are crushed. They say it's the carburetor. Mike's sitting in the car telling everybody, take their time. Let's just get it fixed. They've got another carburetor sitting on the wall, taking off the air cleaner. They're going to go to work on it. They're also back on the deck lit up, checking back there. Might be looking for a fuel pickup problem. But right now, Mike Skinner's day, early problems. So it's not brakes that got him. Looks like it's the carburetor. This will take a little while. The caution helps, but not enough. So work continues on Mike Skinner's car as the field behind the pace car now comes off of corner number four. Let's take a look at what started everything. Here's the 31 car. Mike Skinner is going to have a problem when he comes off the second corner. And watch, we see Mike Walters already three abreast as he come off the corner. And watch these cars as they start having trying to stop. In front of them, Skinner has stopped. And we see the four car is going to have no place to go. He gets booted from behind, almost spins out. We see Mike Wallace, the spam car, and there we see the dead duck in the water, the 31 car of Skinner. And from the Pennzoil copter cam overhead, we get a good panoramic look at what happened down below. There's Walter being forced high, and Skinner there way up toward the wall as the car was faltering coming off the corner and oh Sterling Marlin nearly spun into who was it Ricky Craven Ricky Craven almost a 25 car on the inside and then when they came around again in uh, the second corner Steve Grissom got sideways might have had a little help from behind there but everybody else scrambled and avoided him but the caution is out for the first time here at Martinsville we'll take a break and be right back Welcome 
welcome back to our Speed World coverage of the Goodies Headache Powder 500 at Martinsville. The crowd rises to its feet again. We have the restart, and Joe Nemechek remains up front. That's Jeff Gordon running second. Pulse sitter Kenny Wallace is third, and Hut Strickland is looking for a way around. And Chad Little is losing oil over the racetrack. He's slipping and sliding, almost spinning out. And we see the damage to the nose of his car. And look at the leaders coming in. They've been told that there's oil up there. And Whoa. a couple of them, Jeff Bodine getting sideways. He spins, as a matter of fact. Yeah, couldn't help it. That oil was so much there that you get in the, wheel, the wheels. It's just like being on ice. Yep. And once again, the caution flag comes out, but some heavy damage to the nose, the left front nose of Jeff Bodine's car. And he hit uh, Kyle Petty when he did that half spin, and that's what caused the damage to the front end. Hit Kyle Petty in the right rear tire, so hope that there's no damage to the right rear of the Hot Wheels car. Well, this is going to take a bit of time to clean up because uh, he put down quite a bit of oil out there. Apparently an oil line or maybe an oil filter. Let's see if Kyle comes along on the right side, see how much damage there is on the right side of his car. John Kernan, what do you know? When everybody bunched up and checked up here on the backstretch, Chad got into the back of someone. I just talked to Clyde Booth. He says the problem is they got a puncture in the oil cooler, which is in that left front of the car. So that's where the oil is coming from. Chad is in. They're going to try and get it fixed and get him back out there. And so the John Deere Pontiac is behind the wall, and here is... Chad Little laying down the oil. So you know that he's losing oil because we see him just at the speed he's going, he's almost spinning out. Mark Martin tries to get on the inside. Now here comes the leaders. Joe Nemechek on the left side of your screen is the leader. He goes in the corner. He tries to go above the oil. So does Jeff Gordon. But they get in it and up the hill they go. <laughs> Kenny Wallace tries to come on the inside. Now Jeff Bodine gets right in the oil. He saves it once. And then he spins, goes down, and boom, runs into Kyle Petty's right rear tire. And from Jeff's onboard camera. See, he wasn't accelerating very heavy. He didn't have to have much power to the wheels because it was so slick right where he was. He is in, and Jerry punches there. Primarily sheet metal damage left front, the nose piece and left front fender shoved back in against the left front tire on the QBC Ford. Pat Trison and the crew now replace that left front tire. And now we'll begin to use some of those pry bars and tools we talked about at the beginning of the show. They let the car off the jack and then now the tire is still rubbing. They realize if it goes back out, it's just going to cut that tire. They finally pry it away and he is down and away but probably will come back in. Let's check in once again on the progress of Mike Skinner's car up with Bill Weber. Well, Skinner's back on the track, lost a handful of laps here. They did change the fuel filter in the rear of the car. Kevin Hamlin is looking at it on top of the toolbox now. They hope that's the problem. They can't really seem to find anything wrong with it, but they seem to think that's the problem. They did not change the carburetor. John on Sterling Marlin. Sterling Marlin, who got crunched a little bit earlier, talked to Tim Brewer, his crew chief. And the car looks like it's your sheet metal damage, but Tim says that any time that you've got on that front part of the nose where the fender is pushed in like it is on their car, you're going to lose down for So he expects Sterling to have a handful uh, when the race gets back to green. Rick Mast is also on pit road right now. He was involved in this last skirmish, and when he was leaving pit road last time out, we could see some kind of liquid coming out the left front of the car, so his crew has the hood up back here on the back stretch. They're working trying to correct that. Only 14 laps completed, and already numerous cars are showing the battle scars of racing at Martinsville. We'll be right back. We have uh, tempers flaring on pit road already. Looks like the NASCAR officials held Jeff Bodine there, and members of Jeff Bodine's crew don't think he should have been. That's Pat Trison, the new crew chief this year, and he's uh, a little upset. Steve Pitts is coming trying to explain it to us here, but they tried to explain to Pat that they were held Jeff Bodine for speeding on pit road and Pat is saying we came down the car was damaged we, we took our time getting out but even Jeff Bodine inside the car just radio Pat said Pat it's a call from upstairs we have to deal with it they're going to hold us a lap and that's all we can do but Pat still trying to talk to Steve Peterson to try to plead their case they had made three pit stops to pull that left front fender away and now they held Bodine and he is a lap down. 
Jeff Bodine picked up his first NASCAR Winston Cup win here in April of 94. That was for Rick Hendrick. Here's a suspension cam on Jeff's QVC Ford. And you see the sway bar arm? On, see the sway bar arm? There, you see this little thing right there? That's a chain link. The bar is not solid. The, the link is not solid between the control arm and the bar. Bill Weber? Well, the John Deere Pontiac is a mess. It's been a great week for Chad Little. Their child, Jesse, was born this week, but a, a disappointing start to this race, Chad. What happened? Uh, I just, you know, I really just didn't give myself enough room on that restart, and everyone bottlenecked slowing down going into turn three, and, geez, I just shifted into the third gear and was wide open, and I couldn't slow down in time, and I mean, it's really unfortunate. You know, it's, it's more of a damn driver error than anything else, but all we can do now is get it fixed, and, um, back out and make some points and just got to be a little more patient. Steve Grissom trying to get a lap back. He's on the inside. Remember, he spun, but he can't do it. Nemechek gets to bite off the corner, but now they're going through the oil dry. Still a little slippery up there, it looks like. Coming off the corner. Here's the square D on board camera as Kenny Wallace tries to work to the outside of Jeff Gordon. And Grissom still trying to get his lap back up there to your left. And Elliott spins down the back stretch on the inside wall. Pretty good contact with the right front. No caution yet. And Grissom is going to be the back. He gets that lap back. Now there's a caution. But they did not take the caution flag that time. I think Steve's still going to have to come around and be ahead of the now leader Jeff Gordon. Yeah, he needs to race on back. The spotter has told him that, so he's running hard into turn three. I don't think that, that Gordon will just bust his can to try to beat Steve Grissom back. Let him get that lap back, and he's going to do it. And Mike Skinner, their third in line, also had thoughts of doing so, but he realized that he couldn't make up the difference, and so Skinner remains eight laps eight down. Laps down. I call that about 22 seconds too soon, didn't I? <laughs> Bill Elliott is back underway. Well, almost. Well, not quite. He's broken the steering on the car. He's unable to steer the car. You see how that right front's flopping around? The tie rod is broken on that car. We've seen Mark Martin in and out of the pits numerous times in the first 22 laps. John, what's going on with him? Bob Mark came in two times on that last caution flag because he had a lot of oil on the windshield. They came in, cleaned off the windshield, he went back out, said it wasn't good enough, it was still very dirty, very oil covered. So he came back in a second time and they had to clean it one more time. And uh, they said they decided to come back in a second time because they weren't going to lose that many positions. Now Rick Mast, who's had some contact with a couple of cars out there, is sitting on pit road here on the back stretch. Told you there was some fluid coming out of that car. It turned out the radiator is broken whenever uh, he got into the back of someone. So Rick is sitting on pit road. The team is having a bit of a problem getting the radiator out, but now it looks like they're uh, ready to put the new radiator in. So Rick, who doesn't feel well today, is having a very tough day, and it will turn out to be a long one for him. And Bill Elliott is backing up, and now a uh, tow truck arrives at the scene. Looks like he's trying to escape the tow truck. There's Mike Beam, uh, Bill's crew chief, who shakes his head and... Uh, is disappointed at what's happened here early in the race. 23 laps have been completed. We're under our third caution of the afternoon. It's Jeff Gordon at the front of the field early on in the Goodies Headache Powder 500. Great addition to our coverage of NASCAR Winston Cup races in 1997, the Pennzoil Copter Cam. Helicopter hovering over each and every racetrack that we go to this year with an onboard camera giving us a good overhead perspective of what's going on. And what's going on at the track right now is still caution as uh, they're still trying to get the track ready for high-speed competition. Bill Elliott was the reason for this most recent caution. He spun down the backstretch. Jeff Bodine in and out of the pits once again. Doc, what's the latest on him? If we can unravel this slightly for Jeff Bodine, what happened was the initial thought in the pits here that Jeff Bodine was being held for speeding on pit road. That's not the case at all. NASCAR said, we agree with you, Pat. Your driver was not speeding because you had a flat tire. What you're being penalized for is moving up the pit. When you leave pit road, you have to go to the end of the longest line and come around and come to on pit road when that line passes the mark. You advanced your position, came up on the inside of all of the cars, 
to come back down pit road to gain some time. You can't do that, and our rules require you to be held here on pit road, and that cost Jeff Bodine a lap. He came back in, they pulled the fender away, checked the left front tire. It is not rubbing, but he is indeed one lap down. Yes, he is in 38th position already. Three cars are shown as out of the race. Chad Little, Rick Mast, and Bill Elliott. From the Family Channel in car, let's watch this. There's Elliott in. He goes up on the outside of Bill. They're still, he's still on the outside. He was beside, Elliot was beside on Ted Musgrave, and I don't know if they touched him. Bill tried to jerk the car away. What, Bill, uh, John Kernan? Well, Bill is behind the wall working on that. Let's uh, pose the question to Bill. Bill, looking at the in car, it looks like you and Ted Musgrave might have had some contact. Is that right? And then what happened? Well, me and a thick thing got together over there. When we touched, I touched his left rear, and it just locked up the wheel. And then I just was ended up standing to the wall. Well, you guys are right. There was contact, locked up the wheel, and Bill is now behind the wall. Disappointing uh, day for him because they had qualified well, and Bill was looking forward to a very good run. And Bill Elliott is having a good early part of the season. He's ninth in the point standings. Jeff Gordon is at the front of the field, and we're on board now with his Quaker State camera. He's leading his sixth consecutive race here at Martinsville, and now on board with Michael Waltram as the green flag comes out for the restart. to the inside of in turn number one. And Jeff Burton up front. Rusty looking for his fifth consecutive win in this race, the spring race at Martinsville. Spencer on the inside of Musgrave. Battle for ninth spot. Well, here's where you have to use the brakes a lot more than you want to, Danny, this early in the race when you're running in the traffic that heavy. Prime Star Family Channel car. Musgrave at the helm. And Spencer moves by, takes a spot away. Also, 99 car, Jeff Burton, the X-side battery car. And here comes Rusty Wallace. Body go by Ted Musgrave, or at least try to in the turn one. And Joe Nemechek still struggling on the bottom of the racetrack, losing positions back to about eight spot right now. He was the early leader, but has dropped back now as your scoring pylon will show you to ninth position as Jimmy Spencer gets around. field summary the numbers and parentheses indicate the driver's starting position burton up from 19th to 10th picked up a couple of spots since the green flag dropped the all-time winningest driver active driver at martinsville and jerry has an update on nemechek who continues to drop back 
Well, just a moment ago, he, he told Mike Hilmanson, I'm stuck on the inside. I can't get an opening to get to the outside. Finally, he's able to move up behind Rusty Wallace. But until Rusty Wallace is opening between him and Bobby Bonney, Joe was on the inside of the racetrack, couldn't use the throttle, had to use the brakes, and lost a lot of spots. Matter of fact, he dropped out of the top 10. He's now back in 11th. And that's a reverse situation, Bob. Normally, you say, I got caught up, up on the outside, get back, to, get back to the inside. That is abnormal for here at Martinsville. And you know, Mark Martin has had a terrible time this weekend. Never seen Mike Skinner and Kyle Petty get together. But here's see Mark Martin. Watch as he comes off the corner on the outside and bam, scrubs the wall as he and Robbie Gordon makes a little contact. He tried to avoid Tried to avoid the Robbie Gordon car and just brushed the wall. Looking back on Michael Waltrip and others. Mark Martin currently running in 28th position. Now we look forward to Mark Martin from Michael's perspective. That's what you want to see is a lot of gap between you and that car up there. So you can go in the corner at your own pace. You don't have to worry about running in the back of someone using too much brakes. Jeff Gordon has pulled out to a pretty substantial lead here over Kenny Wallace. And by the same token, Wallace has a lot of racetrack between himself and the third place car, Hunt Strickland. This is the eighth consecutive short track race that Jeff Gordon has led. There's second. Back we go to see Rusty Wallace move into ninth spot, passing Jimmy Spencer. Started 15th, remember. So just picks them off one at a time. Rusty comes off the corner. Look at the serial scoring on Rusty here, courtesy of MCI. We timed the laps 31 and 43rd. He went from 14th position on lap number 31 to his current position of 9th. Uh, Kenny Wallace with a square D on board, and you can see that there's a quite a bit of racetrack between himself and Jeff Gordon up ahead. Yeah, oh, Jeff Gordon's pulling on away, Bob, just a little bit every lap. Here's an auto zone on track interval. Laps 43 through 47. The interval went from 1.3 seconds. Watch out for seconds. Look yep. how consistent the times are on Jeff Gordon. 20.68778. And here at Kenny Walsh, look at this one, 21.1. Those are the ones that kill you right there. He lost four tenths of a second. Kenny Wallace did to Jeff Gordon. Now, if you could just be a little more consistent on your underlining or lining on the... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're a lot better. But tell us straight. All right. Hunt Strickland running in third spot. Then Bobby Hamilton is fourth. And Ricky Rudd fifth. As the rest of the field comes down, completing lap number 49. They'll earn hearts move from 25th up to 16th. But there is something flapping. Yeah, there's yeah. something. I guess that's a piece of tape that they've got wrapped around something or he's picked up something on the racetrack. Obviously not affecting the car because yeah. he's uh, moving ahead, as they say. In fact, catching up with some of the slower cars now at the back of the field, he has Dave Marcus, Steve Brissom, and Bobby Hillen just ahead of him. We'll take another break and be back with more live coverage from Martinsville Speedway in Virginia. Jeff Gordon at the front of the field and the goodies headache powder 500 at Martinsville and he has begun to lap some of the slower traffic already gotten by Dave Marcus and Bobby Hillen. Steve Grissom just ahead now. Their second place Kenny Wallace and he's pursued by the number eight car of Hutt Strickland running in third. Now that's a car that you would not 
say is a short track car, that eight car, the Circuit City car. But these guys went to Richmond, Virginia about a month ago and tested three days. Ned, they must have learned something at that racetrack that certainly helped them this weekend. Now, Ned, where they felt that they did learn a lot. Of course, Richmond is a three-quarter mile track. This is a half a mile track, but both of them are relatively flat when you compare them, say, to a Bristol or some of the other higher speed racetracks. Jerry Punch has more. Well, yesterday, Hunt Strickland was not satisfied with the way the car ran in final practice. In fact, they had a water leak in the motor, the car not coming off the corners. So yesterday afternoon late, Eddie Milton and the crew started and finished this morning. They put the qualifying motor back in. So that's the strongest motor we got. It should get him off the corners today, and hopefully we can stay in the top five. And oh, by the way, a moment ago before we went to break, that thing flapping beneath Jeff Gordon's car. The crew down here took a vote. Half said it was tape. The other half said it was a plastic. Bag. It rolled off here about four or five minutes ago. It was a plastic bag. <laughs> so that problem is solved. We saw Bill Elliott there for just a moment. Uh, Bob, he is back out on the racetrack. Unfortunately, Bill's about 40 laps down. And Rusty Wallace has gained another couple of spots up to seventh place at the moment as you watch another Napa field summary. We're on board with Rusty. As he follows Kyle Petty. It's Kyle, the Hot Wheels car, directly in front of him. That hose sticking up in the middle of the screen is a drink hose where Rusty can reach and put that in his mouth and suck water out of the cooler. Coming up now on Kyle Petty to challenge for the sixth spot. Bill Earnhardt just went by Bobby Labotti and took over the 13th position. There goes Rusty on the inside of Kyle Petty. He goes by. Move him in the sixth. Now Terry Labonte will try to follow Rusty through. Marlon Waltrip running together out there. And Ricky Craven is involved in that mix. That's a battle back about 29th, 30th, and 31st. There's Robbie Gordon, the 40 car. There you can see the uh, choices that have uh, been made in the NFL draft that is going on all this weekend. And Jack Mike Wallace. Spam car will go a lap down to our leader. That is the 34th place car. And Doug Reichert isn't here this weekend because uh, he works on a, a, a Craftsman truck, right? That's right. He's in Phoenix for the Craftsman truck race out there this afternoon. And I think Todd Myers uh -huh. is calling the shots this afternoon on the spam car. Yep. Well, Ned was talking about Earnhardt. There he is, Ned. He's moving right on up through. He's in 13th position now, started 25th. So he's passed half of the cars that he needed to to get to the front. There you see the progression he's made from lap 31 when he was 20th. He's about a half a lap behind Jeff Gordon right now. There's no question that his car, Black, is back. At Richmond, he finished 25th. That put him in 24th in the point standings. A good eighth place finish at Atlanta, 15th at Darlington, 6th at Texas, at 6th last week at Bristol. And that has put him in the top 10 in point standings. He is currently eighth going into this event. And his car looks good. It's going around the racetrack, but on the bottom of the racetrack, it doesn't get sideways coming off the corner. It really does look good. Terry Labonte coming up to lap Bobby Hillett. Jimmy Spencer comes off the corner now. We'll join this little battle that also includes Kyle Petty and Jeff Burton. Those cars, those four cars are racing, racing four positions at 5, 44, 99, and 23. That's seventh through 10th. The Pennzoil copter cam shot. Kyle Fendi gets by and just down the bottom of the racetrack. There goes the 99 car. Dale Earnhardt coming up on the tail end of this group. 
right behind Daryl Waltrip who has won 11 races at this facility. Daryl Waltrip has. He's won this race five times and the fall race six times. 11 of his 84 victories have come here. Jerry Punch has more on Dale Earnhardt. As you watch Earnhardt make the progression from 25th starting spot now toward the top 10, the race car he's driving is a car he hasn't driven in a long, long time. For the want of a better name, they just call this car Old Faithful. The last time it came to Martinsville was the fall of 1995, and it won the race. It took it to Richmond that same year and set on the pole, run out of gas in the last few laps, or would have won up there. This is one of the oldest cars they've got, but it's an old one, but a good one, and maybe just what they need to get them back on track and back to victory lane. And Dale is making his 550th NASCAR Winston Cup star here this afternoon. He gets by Bobby Hillen going into turn number three. Now Bobby Labonte comes up along with Ted Musgrave. Rusty Wallace is now sixth and looking at fifth place. Ricky Rudd gets a good run. Can't make the pass. And he just kind of dived down there and tell Ricky Rudd that he wanted that position. Let's don't fight about this too hard. He was trying to tell Ricky. Next time I make that do, I'd free dive. I'd appreciate it. He just kind of let me go by. Now he looks outside there for a moment. Yeah, I think that's just kind of fake. <laughs> Jeff Bodine is one lap down. He's just ahead of Rudd and Wallace. It's like Jeff has got most of his problems worked out because the car is going pretty well. Yeah, he's, he's got a, a pretty good race car there. He's not as fast as a few of them, but he's still in good shape. And here is Dale Earnhardt moving to 12th spot, passing Darrell Waltrip. And Rusty Wallace still works up on the back bumper of that tide ride. Now he does go to the outside, and will he try that? Nah, I don't think so. Well, maybe. He's going to try it. By golly, he is on the outside. I've never seen Rusty Wallace out there. <laughs> well, he saw that Ricky Rudd was sort of hung up behind Jeff Bodine there, and he thought, well, maybe I can go, and Ricky's going to give him the room to run out there. And with those two drivers battling side by side, uh, Jeff Bodine pulls away for a moment, but now Rusty makes the pass, completes the pass on the outside, and comes up behind Jeff. Well, that's what we're talking about, about not abusing your car. Ricky Rudd could have battled the two car a lot harder than he did, but... That would just use both cars up, and now is not the time to do that. Too early in the race. Look at that number up there in the top left of your screen. Still 419 laps to go. Ooh. And there we see the fourth place yeah. car right in front of Rusty Wallace. That's Hutch Strickland. Bobby Hamilton is running third. He's going to try it up high again. Ooh, a little contact there, maybe, huh? Not a bit as it came off the corner. Going down in turn three, Rusty Wallace once again tries to go up on the outside. Can't make it. Whoops, a little contact there. That moved him out of the way enough. Got by. Bill Weber has more on Rusty Wallace, who's now fifth. Bob, we talked to Rusty yesterday afternoon after final practice. He's had a lot of success at this track, six wins. But he said today he was not going to muscle his way to the front. He was going to basically try and tip to the front. He wasn't going to force the issue. When the pass came, Kenny would take it. But he wasn't going to do any pushing or shoving. Right now, side by side with Hutt Strickland, going down the back stretch, battling for fourth. Rusty said black 350 is the key. He wants really good breaks on lap 350 to get him to the finish. But then he said, in the last 150 laps, you can use up your brakes too. Right now, around Hunt Strickland, Wallace from 15 to the third. And the king of the short tracks is on the march toward the front, trying to catch Jeff Gordon, who leaves the goodies headache powder 500 at the moment with 85 laps on the board. And here's Jeff as he's still out there with a comfortable lead passing some of the slower cars. Back with more in just a moment. And NASCAR 
our Winston Cup racing today from Martinsville Speedway in Virginia, looking from the Pennzoil Copter Can. Of course, the uh, Pennzoil car is driven by Johnny Benson, who currently runs in 26th position. And there's a shot of the great crowd that has gathered here for this big day at Martinsville. Here's the Miller Lite onboard camera. And Mark Martin, he's in 22nd. Jeff Bodine is a lap down in 37th spot. Ted Musgrave is 16th, matching his car number. Michael Waltrip in car number 21 is a lap down in 33rd position. The Square D in car camera, driven by Kenny Wallace, who continues to run in second, about a full straightaway ahead of this man, Jeff Gordon. The Quaker State onboard camera, and he is our true value man of the race. Won his 22nd career victory last week at Bristol. Five top five finishes this season. And true value on behalf of Jeff is donating $1,000 to his favorite charity, the Leukemia Society of America. That's one of many organizations that Jeff is involved in. And Bobby Hamilton, the STP Pontiac, has moved by Kenny Wallace to take over that second spot. how it happened in down the front stretch at the start finish line he gets position and Kenny Wallace wisely chooses not to battle a 43 car and he moves into second spot and Jeff Gordon is in a whole bunch of traffic there he moves around Dick Trickle Trickle who ran in the bush race last night in Nashville Tennessee yeah you got to think that Dale and Teresa Earnhardt are pretty happy today because their driver Steve Park won that race at Nashville last night. Yes a great job Steve Park congratulations. Let's take a look at the speeds at the line here as Jeff comes off the fourth corner and onto the main straightaway. And these speeds are in miles per hour. Next time by we'll do that. Of course he's in heavy traffic right now he isn't going to run as fast as he has been running because of the traffic that he's in. And the other competitors are saying, thank goodness. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because he's already put the lap on some good cars like Sterling Marlin and Ernie Irvin and Brett Bodine. And some of those caution is out there debris somewhere on the racetrack. Well, so much for our speeds. Now yep. they are reduced because of debris on the racetrack and the fourth caution of the race comes out. Now the race to the line here. Dick Trickle's getting his lap back. Sterling Marlin's going to try to come and get his lap back. Here comes Sterling Marlin. He's on the inside. Jeff Gordon's going to let him do that. Robbie Gordon's the next car back there, but he got sideways coming off the corner and couldn't make it. Boy, he sure did get sideways, and he was going so fast that he had to slam on the brakes. You see him there on the inside to avoid hitting the cars that had already slowed down after crossing the line. We'll be right back. to the Martinsville Speedway. The Goody's heading powder 500. We're on the back stretch. Dale Earnhardt is in. The guys on the front stretch already had their service in the back out on the track. Earnhardt getting four tires, no adjustments. The car is running very, very well, but it looks like Jeremy Mayfield and Earnhardt make some contact as Mayfield beat him out. Also, Dale Jarrett wins the race off pit road here on the back stretch, and that could cause a dented fender, a tire rub, possibly for both of those cars. We'll have to check and uh, keep an eye on that from out there. Boy, you can hear that, couldn't you? Well, look at that. It's already rubbing oh, the yeah. fender. The tire is already being rubbing the fender and smoking. So Earnhardt really needs to go back to the pit, and but he didn't. He did not. He chose not to go in that time. He hates to give up that track position. On the front stretch, let's take a look at the uh, pit stops that occurred up here with Gordon Hamilton and Kenny Wallace. ISO. Jeff Gordon stops. Now we see the 43 car, the 81 car still coming down. And Rusty Wallace comes in the pits. There you see me just stop. Rusty is pitted behind the 16 car of Ted Musgrave, and it pretty much boxes Rusty in up here. And when he, when he finishes his pit stop, he's going to have to back up. We see the 24 car leaving. Here comes the 43. And Rusty Wallace has to back finally and almost makes contact with the five car as he leaves. Jerry has more on uh, Gordon and Wallace. 
Well, Jeff Gordon didn't want any major changes on the race car, so the track is changing, but the car itself is very good. They made a slight half-pound air pressure adjustment on the left side of Gordon's car, number 24. Now, in Kenny Wallace's pit, Kenny wanted more forward bite in the square D Ford. They made an air pressure adjustment in the right rear, and the big thing about their pit, they had a great pit stop and were able to beat the 43 car off pit road. That put them second on the racetrack. Let's go to Bill Weber. Well, as you might imagine, the two team pretty disappointed. Rusty did get boxed in on that pit stop. They're having a good run, and they had a good stop. But here's one of the keys to their good run here today. This tire just came off Rusty Wallace's car, but see this? It came from Ernie Irvin's car, because before the race, after the teams get their tires, they try and match up these code numbers. There are several sets here on these, on these tires. So the two bunch took their code numbers. They often share with the 28 and the 88 to find out what their code numbers are. When the two found out what their numbers were, they took them over to the 28. The two and the 28 swapped tires, rims and all. So Rusty actually ran the first portion of this race on the tires that were designated for Ernie Urban. But don't worry, guys, it's legal to do. <laughs> and the tire rub on Dale Earnhardt continues, and uh, he's going to be coming in for a pit stop, we understand. This is... Uh how it all happened when he came out of the pits. Here we see, there's Jerry Mayfield. He's coming out of the pits, and Earnhardt, Ooh. just a little slight contact with the left rear, enough to push the fender on the right front tire of the three car. Back in just a moment at Martinsville. The update on uh, Dale Earnhardt and John Kernan. Bob Dale has had to pit. They pulled the fender away. They've changed right side tires. I've got the tire off the right front, and this is what happens when the fender rubs. Now, look at this stripe here. You can already feel that it's already rubbed off a good bit of the tread, and they don't have that much tread on here to begin with. This was under caution. Had, it, had he not come in, pulled the fender back, changed tires, and gone back out there, as they go into the turns, the right front would want to roll over on this tire. It wouldn't have lasted very long. He would have, they would have blown the tire, and then he would have been probably into the wall. But because they had the caution, they took advantage of it, came in. Earnhardt's car is fixed, but he's got a long way to go. Let's go to Dr. Jerry Punch. You know, we're often quick to criticize when the tires wear out early or there's a problem with the race tires, but we're hardly ever compliment Goodyear on a great job. Take a look at the right rear tire off Jeff Gordon's car. This tire ran 102 laps and still has the wear indicator dimple showing, meaning when you measure this tire, he has worn only one. 132nd off the right rear tire. Incredible. Ray Evernham just radio Jeff said, I have never seen tires with this little wear at Martinsville. Goodyear has done a whale of a job. The guys on that pit stop that Earnhardt had to come back in, he was 16th when he came out of the pits. When he came, went back in, he lost 10 positions. He is now 26, 26 cars on the lead lap. Green flag comes out again. You'll notice that Dick Trickle did cross the line ahead of Jeff Gordon, but apparently NASCAR took it away. He lines up to the inside. Yeah, I thought he and Sterling Marlin both got their laps back, but I guess not. Apparently, Jeff Gordon had taken the flag uh, before that, and so neither Trickle nor Marlin get a lap back. Triple. <laughs> now he does. Yeah, he's got it back right now. And here comes Kenny Wallace for the second for the lead, diving down to the inside and trying to pass Jeff Gordon. Now he started on the pole, but he hasn't led yet, has he? Kenny no, Wallace. Not. So, uh, Joe Nemechek took the lead right from this start. Yep, we've only had two leaders and two lead changes. Jeff Gordon and Joe Nemechek. on the inside of the eight car Hunt Strickland. That's about it for sixth spot. We're looking at the eight car from the Miller Lite onboard camera. And they're still side by side. All the way through three and four, and now through one and two. Rusty with a half a car length advantage as they go down the back stretch, but Strickland is hung in tough. Jeff Burton and the 23 car, Jimmy Spencer watching all this. Finally, Hutt just more or less gives Rusty the room to get in, and he does. Talk about bumper to bumper traffic. There it is.
Rusty pulls away on the straights, but Hunt closes up in the corners. Rusty's always talked about the great engine program that they have over at Penske Racing. Here's a battle for second place, Bobby Hamilton and Kenny Wallace. Kenny had made a bid for the lead there earlier, but now Gordon has pulled away by about a half a dozen car lengths. But Dick Trickle is about a half a dozen car lengths ahead of uh, Jeff Gordon, so Dick does have his lap back, and Rusty tries to make another move. He's trying to pass Terry Labonte for the second time today, and Labonte does not make a big issue out of it. And Rusty goes by. Here comes Hutch Strickland. He's trying to get by Labonte. And Terry Labonte is one of those drivers that, that knows how to exercise patience. They call him the Iceman for more reasons than one. He's very patient and cautious out there. Yeah, he's as cool as it comes. This is the Pennzoil Copter Cam shot. Labonte and Strickland go, oh, the 99 car, a little uh, flame out the exhaust pipe. And all of a sudden, Ricky Craven has made his presence known. Ricky is back in the cockpit after setting out Bristol because of the injuries that he suffered at Texas. He made a great pit stop, Bob. I think that maybe they just changed two tires on the Budweiser Chevrolet because he beat all the, he's pitting on the back stretch, and of course they beat a lot of cars that pitted on the front stretch out of the pits. In any case, it has moved him, John Kernan, into the top ten. Well, I tell you what, Ned, you must have a crystal ball up there that makes things crystal clear for you. Yes, that was the strategy. In fact, Andy Grace told me before the race started, he said the first pit stop, depending upon where we are in the track, we will probably only take right side tires. And remember, Ricky pitted a little bit earlier during one of those early cautions. As far as how Ricky is feeling, Ricky is feeling fine. He's gone almost, what, a little more than a fifth of the way, almost coming up on a quarter of the way through this race. He says he feels great, and the car is running really well. So, Ned, man, I tell you what, Ned, you know your stuff, only right side tires this time. <laughs> you guys don't need us anymore. Oh, yes, we do. <laughs> don't go away. Lucky guess. Dr. Punch showed us yesterday during happy hour the brace that Ricky is wearing today to protect those broken ribs. Now, Terry Labonte and Hutt Strickland are at it again, still. <laughs> Like Labonte has a position and he does. This time Hutch Strickland backs off, lets him go in. What was that for, Dad? That was for sixth position. Hutch running seventh now. 99 car, Jeff Burton is eighth. Jimmy Spencer is ninth. Let's do more than show you the top ten. We'll give you a Napa field summary and show you where everybody's running at the moment. In parentheses on the right is where this driver started. Ricky Craven started 35th, is running 10th. Looks like that's the best improvement so far. Jarrett from 23rd to 14th, and Mayfield from 29th to 15th. Mark hey, Martin is doing pretty good. We see uh, in Brady there in 17th position. He was really moving before that caution came out. He had uh, passed a lot of race cars that come from far back and had moved up in to the top 15 positions. There are 27 cars on the lead lap. Oh, well, we may make that 28 here in just a minute, or 26, I should say, as Jeff Gordon positions himself to the oh, side of Trickle, and they bump. Contact down the back stretch. The fans have been watching this battle for several laps. Trickle home as long as he could, but finally, Gordon got by. Jerry? Jeff's Gordon spotter went over to Dick Trickle's spotter and said, hey, here's the deal. If you won't hold us up and let us go by, if the caution comes out, we'll let you have your lap back. If you hold us up and we have to race you, we can both end up sitting out here and tagging the wall. Well, there's a real deal, huh? Yeah. 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 And they almost did spin out. Yeah. yeah. Now this battle between Wallace and Hamilton gets heated up again. Bobby Hamilton, that Pontiac, running good again here at Martinsville. He ran good here last year. Yeah, he led 331 laps here last year. Here's Rusty, who has passed the uh, four car, who's a lap down at 28th. 
But the point is that Rusty has gained track position and now is just a couple of car lengths behind Hamilton. Yes, he passed Ricky Rudd to take over the fourth spot. So there's the second and third place car right in front of Rusty Wallace. It looks like Ned are going to see a repeat of Bristol all over again. If Rusty could ever get up there close to the 24 car, he might have, might be the only one really that has a car that's equal to Jeff Gordon at this point of the race. And Jerry has an update on Kenny Wallace. A couple of times we've seen the 43 car try to make a move inside of the 81. He'll almost have a nose inside in the corner, and then Kenny will pull away the straightaway. Kenny said before the race, having the Robert Yates.